Hello, this is Dominic Cooper, and I want to present you a new practical approach for compact hashing. Put into the paper, Fast and Simple Compact Hashing via Bucketing, written together with my courses Simon Puglisi and Rajiv Raman. So the key idea is to represent this dynamic associative map F. In detail, we have two sets, K and V, and we have a dynamic subset of K with cardinality n and f maps from the subset to v. And common representations of f are search trees and hash tables. We focus in this talk on the latter one. In detail we focus on keys and values whose domains are integers. In particular we want that a key can be represented in omega Bits. Now if omega is at most 20, we can use a plane array to represent f. And the space becomes log of the cardinality of v divided by 8 millibytes, where we divide by 8 to get from bits to bytes. Now this solution becomes invisible whenever omega becomes large. So in this talk we focus on large omega like 32 for the keys and 32 bits for the values. And we take the keys and the values from a random generator. Now one simple solution is to use the C++ STL unordered map hash table. But you can see in this graph that we get here already a huge peak around 2 GB of RAM. Only by hashing 2 to the power of 16 elements. And this unordered map uses closed addressing. So what is closed addressing? In closed addressing we have an array of pointers and each pointer points to a bucket which is basically a list and it has a hash function. Now when a value arrives, like we want to insert 3 and peer, then we use the hash function to determine the pointer, like in this case it's 5, and then insert into the corresponding bucket this element 3 peer. Now can we do better? Another very simple approach is to use array lists, where this array list stores keys and values in order of their insertion time. And you can see already here this huge gap of the memory footprint. However, the main problem now becomes the running time. For instance, if we search a key like 3, we scan the array list downwards until we find the 3, which is, in this case, after n steps. So we took order of n time. We can improve this time by sorting the array list, but then the insertion and the lookup becomes order of log n amortized time. Here we want to focus on constant expected time with low memory footprints. One solution is proposed by Google, which is called Google's sparse hash. It's an open addressing hash table where the hash table is grouped into dynamic buckets and a bit vector addresses the buckets. And you can see that this solution is very competitive to array. In detail, it consists of a bit vector split into regions and each region is assigned to a bucket. And each one in a region corresponds to an element in the bucket. For instance, this one corresponds to eight apple and this one to seven lemon. Now suppose we want to insert a new element three peer, then the hash function, for instance, assigns this element, so position 4, there is a 0, we change this 0 to 1, and this 1 corresponds to the first entry 
of this bucket so it gets this shape. Now can we further improve the memory? One solution proposed by Cleary called compact hashing uses open addressing and a bijection from the set of keys. Such that this bijection can be split up into a hash function value and a remainder. Such that having this hash function value and the remainder we can restore the key. And the idea is that we want to store the remainder instead of the key in the hope that the remainder uses less space. So in a concrete example, we have here stored the remainders instead of the keys, and when a new element arrives, like five lemon, we use phi, which determines the place or the hash value three, and the remainder two. So we store two lemon. Now this works fine because when we have three two, we can use the inverse function and we get 5 back. Now what happens when there is a collision? For that, Cleary resorts to linear probing, which means that, for instance, when we have a new element for peer, we go to the hash value 3 and find that it's already occupied, so we scan downwards until we arrive at the first empty cell and there we insert the element peer with remainder 1. But now the problem is that the inverse function no longer retrieves us the key. So we need an additional information which is called displacement info and you can store that as a plain array just saying that it was 3 and with that we can restore the key back. But the problem is that this displacement info in its plain form takes a lot of space. Here we want to focus on three different representations. The first one is from Cleary, which uses two bit vectors of size m, where m is the image size of the hash function, which corresponds to the number of cells in the hash table. Puyas and others proposed two different variants which represent the displacement info array. The first one uses the alias gamma code, so it blocks the displacement info array into tiny blocks and each block is coded by alias gamma. Another approach is to use a layered version where the first layer corresponds to the displacement info array, where the array elements are just 4-bit integers, and whenever a displacement comes which is larger than what can be represented within 4 bits, we add here an escape symbol and add the actual value 20 into a hash table with the key of the index. Now if we do the memory benchmark, we expect that these solutions perform much better with respect to the memory than the other solutions. Unfortunately, this is not the case. For instance, for the C, which is compact hashing with the layered and the maximal load factor of 0.5, behaves roughly like STD, so it's not memory efficient. To get it memory efficient, there is a solution for combining this compact solution with the sparse one, which is called here C plus S, and it's uh, this cyan curve, and it's very competitive with array. But what we now like to propose is another one, which uses closed addressing but also techniques like array and compact hashing. And you can see that this solution called chain, this orange curve, is the most efficient one. So what is the idea behind chain? First, chain uses closed addressing, so it stores pointers to buckets. 
but a bucket is represented as a key bucket and a value bucket like array and we use compact hashing so we store the remainders instead of the plain values so for instance if we have three peer which we want to insert we insert two peer because two is the remainder if we do the space analysis we observe that a bucket costs order of omega bits for the pointer and the bucket lengths we remind us that omega is the number of bits needed for a key and n is the number of elements and our target is to store the hash table in order n log n bits and therefore the number of buckets should be at most order of n over omega therefore the image size of our hash function m is n divided by omega and consequently the remainder uses roughly omega minus log n divided by omega bits which is omega minus log n plus log omega and the first two terms are the number of bits required by compact so the last term is kind of a penalty and in the following I want to show you an approach where we can get rid of that so our idea is to increase the number of buckets to n such that m becomes n but as previously explained each bucket costs us order of omega bits now our idea comes from sparse that we maintain multiple buckets in a group to put it in other words chain represents each bucket separately with a separate pointer while group groups together multiple buckets to a bucket group and uses a bit vector to demarcate the bucket boundaries. Here we use a unary encoding where a 1 marks the bucket boundary and a 0 to mark a bucket entry. For instance, the bucket with pointer 1 starts with this one and ends with this one. And in between the zeros correspond to the elements of the bucket 1. You can also see that the bucket 2 is empty and the bucket 3 contains two elements. Next we focus on rehashing. We do a rehashing in chain whenever a bucket reaches order of omega elements. In group we do a rehashing when a group reaches order of omega elements. Consequently we can store the group bit vector in order omega bits and it's feasible to scan this bit vector naively without any fancy rank selected structures. In practice we set this bounds for the maximum group and bucket size to 255 and therefore we can store the bucket lengths in a single byte. A consequence is that a bucket in chain and a group in group have always order omega elements. So insertion costs order omega worst case time, and assuming that we don't need to rehash. Considering querying for chain, we use the same argument that a bucket has at most order omega elements, and therefore the query time is order omega in the worst case. For group, we use the group bit vector to find the respective bucket, but because the bit vector has order omega bits, we can find this bucket in constant expected time, assuming that omega bits fit into a mesh invert. And because the bucket size in group is constant expectedly, we get constant expected time overall. For analyzing the space bounds, we use the following known fact that for storing n keys from k, we need at least log n chosen over 2 to the power of omega bits, which gives us this expression and which we abbreviate as b in the following. Having b, we can now relate our hash tables with the previously explained compact hash tables namely Cleary, Elias, and Layard. 
their space bounds are very close to the lower bound, having only additionally epsilon b bits, where epsilon is a constant between 0 and 1. And layered has additionally small penalty. Group has the best space bounds and chain the worst ones. Considering the construction time, our solutions do not look so good than the other ones having kind of constant expected time. They have also constant expected time for the querying, but other group has constant expected time, but unfortunately J not. These bounds suggest that our approaches are kind of slow, but we will show in the following experiments that this is not the case. For the experiments we took again keys and values from a random source, and this time we used 8-bit values. For the other approaches, we set the maximum load factor to 0 0.95 and we use a sparse layout where applicable. In this plot, we show the average space per element. And you can see in the yellow line, which is for group, that group has the smallest space requirements. We can also see that Cleary, Chain and Elias behave roughly equal. And Google and Layered are not space economic. For the construction time, we can see that Elias is very slow. To focus on this part, we do the same plot but without Elias. Here we can see that Google is the fastest option, then followed by Chain, and then by Group, and the slowest options are Cleary and Layered. Considering the query time, we can see that group is mostly slower than chain, Google is the fastest, and in between are Cleary and Layered, which have sometimes spikes that happen at high load factors. We summarize our experiments as follows. On the one end is Google, taking the most space, but also being the fastest solution, on the other end is Elias, being one of the most space efficient solutions, but also being very slow. Cleary has good space requirements, but otherwise is slow. Layered is on average at space, but sometimes fast at querying, but also sometimes slower than group at high loads. On the other hand, group and chain behave at space requirements very good, group is best, and at construction they are fast, but for querying they are slow. So in total we have proposed two new hash tables, and the techniques we used are closed addressing, bucketing, compact hashing, and a big factor like in Google sparse hash table. The characteristics are that we don't need to store the displacement information, we are memory efficient, our constructions are fast, but our queries are a little bit slow. And what we want to focus on is to accelerate the query times by using SIMD instructions and to use an overflow table for averaging the loads of the buckets. And that's all. Thank you for watching.